Welcome to our lecture online. From the previous video, we saw that only a very small portion of the energy from the Sun that reaches Venus makes it down to the surface. Directly, we have about a flux of a little over 2600 watts per square meter, and of that, about 160 of it makes it to the surface. But if we take into account the curvature of the planet, with the northern and southern part of the planet only receive a small fraction of that due to the angle, only about 2.5% of the total energy influx is received by the surface of the planet. It's absorbed and then re-radiated at a rate of about 160 watts per square meter from the surface. Now, since the surface is so hot, about 735K or 462 degrees Celsius, of course the, the black body emission curve is much different on Venus than it is on the Earth. On the Earth, the black body uh, curve would be much more skewed to the right and wouldn't be nearly as high and so the amount of absorption depends a lot upon what that black body curve looks like. So we can see here that the peak for Venus is about 4 micrometers where the peak for the Earth is much closer to about 10 micrometers. Now if we take a look at the absorption bands of carbon dioxide and water vapor, which are the two most important constituents in the atmosphere that absorb the energy from the surface, and yes indeed, there's a small amount of water vapor that actually plays a significant role, but not nearly as big in this case as carbon dioxide. By far, carbon dioxide is the most important greenhouse gas on Venus because after all, 96.5% or so of the atmosphere is made out of carbon dioxide where water vapor makes only a very small fraction of 1%. Although, even then, it does make a significant difference because water vapor is such a good absorber of energy at those particular wavelengths. So when we take a look at the black body radiation curve with peaks at 4 micrometers for Venus and about 10 micrometers for the Earth, notice where carbon dioxide does its primary absorption. It does so between the wavelengths of 13 to 17 micrometers, just like on the Earth. But on the Earth, this is the primary means by which carbon dioxide absorbs energy from the surface. You can see that's not the case on Venus. The other two absorption bands, which are almost insignificant on the Earth, first of all, because the black body radiation curve is very small at this, radi at this uh, wavelength on the Earth, and that the two bands are almost completely enveloped by the absorption of water vapor. On Venus, that's not the case. On Venus, these are very two very strong absorption bands because the radiation curve is very high at those particular wavelengths. So carbon dioxide does most of it absorbing at the 2.7 to 2.9 micrometers and 4 to 4.5 micrometers over here, and not so much around the 15 micrometer band. Now, water vapor does have bands here, 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 and here, as well as beyond 50 micrometers to the right. So you can see that strong overlap right here, but again, it's not that significant on Venus. Now, the rest of it, and what, part of the reason why the curves aren't as high for water vapor, because there's so much less water vapor in the atmosphere than carbon dioxide, it doesn't fully absorb all of the radiation at those bands. It does only a partial radiation at, the, at those particular wavelengths. Now you can see there's still a lot of spaces where there's no absorption, which means that a large percentage of that small amount of radiation that comes from the surface of Venus actually makes it back to space unhindered. But it's that small fraction of a small percentage of the radiation gets a, that gets emitted by the surface that gets absorbed by the atmosphere, even that small amount, much, much smaller than on the Earth, that causes Venus to get tremendously hot. So it's not so much that a lot of the radiation is absorbed, only a small percentage of the radiation of a small amount to begin with, but it's the fact that the atmosphere is so enormously thick that that little amount of radiation, because if there was no greenhouse effect, the temperature on the surface of Venus would be about 230 Kelvin, about 45 Celsius degrees below zero, but it's that small amount of heat that gets trapped in the atmosphere that takes a very long time to make it to space because the atmosphere is so enormously thick. So very slowly, at a very low rate of about 160 watts per square meter, that energy simply gets absorbed and, and just well, only a small portion of that, so let's say 
perhaps only 30, 40, or 50 watts per square meter gets absorbed, but that gets trapped in that very thick, very voluminous atmosphere in such a way that it takes a very long time for that heat to make it through the atmosphere. It's basically a stagnant heat that very slowly makes itself outside the atmosphere, and because of that, it gets so hot on Venus. So we'll, we'll take a look at that a little bit more closely. So it's not so much the amount of heat that's been absorbed, but the amount of heat that's been retained because of the greenhouse effect and primarily because of the enormous amount of, of atmosphere, about 90 times the atmosphere as compared to the Earth. And that is why it is so hot on Venus.